Hi, this is Paul from Pear Tree Education. Today's video is the third of a three-part video series about project-based learning. In this third part, I'd like to talk about the differences and similarities between project-based learning and problem-based learning. A lot of confusion arises about these two approaches, particularly because they share the same acronym, PBL. While there are in fact some similarities between these two approaches that go beyond the same acronyms, the words project and problem really do indicate some clear differences. Problem-based learning is perhaps better known than project-based learning. For certain, there are far more books written about problem-based learning. This is likely because it originated as a training approach in the prominent medical field, whereas project-based learning originated as an approach for school education, which has always received less attention and less funding, hence modern education methods still being as so outdated. Problem-based learning centers around a problem. This problem is almost always defined by the teacher or instructor and is designed to challenge students to apply their knowledge and skills to solve a problem. Problems are ill-defined, meaning that students have to figure out what it is that they have to think about and what the problem is in order to solve it. This ambiguity in itself leads to multiple outcomes or solutions. This inevitably requires higher ordered thinking skills going far beyond the level of understanding required from traditional classes that have clearly defined questions to be solved. Problems tend to be very challenging, generally too challenging for an individual student to solve alone. This then creates the need for teamwork and collaboration with students feeding off each other's creative ideas and different strengths. At the same time, the problems can't be excessively challenging that students stand no chance of coming up with any viable solution. This final solution is presented to the teacher and the class. However, it isn't likely to be presented to an external audience. Although problem-based learning originated in medicine is now very commonly used in math classes and other single discipline classes, although I don't necessarily think it has to be this way. For instance, we use problem-based learning approaches in our own school and we teach using theme-based classes that aren't single disciplines. Now onto project-based learning. As the name suggests, this is about creating a project, which ordinarily takes the form of an artifact that is presented to a real-life audience. While the student or group of students have a certain amount of autonomy over their project, the teacher still clearly sets defined parameters. This is necessary to ensure that projects have a completion date and can be completed within a certain time span. Also, it ensures that students are working on similar topics that they're learning about and demonstrating similar forms of knowledge, even if the project artifacts differ considerably. While the name project-based learning suggests that the project is the most important feature of this approach, I would argue that the process is at least as important, if not more so, since the challenges that students have to overcome in order to produce the project are pretty substantial and mostly cannot be fully appreciated by looking at the finished project. These challenges aren't just academic ones either, but involve socio-emotional challenges like working with others who don't share your opinion, defending your point of view, persuading others and dealing with frustration. Additionally, project-based learning isn't just about the finished artifact, but the presentation of that artifact, which often includes public speaking. Aside from identifying differences between project-based learning and problem-based learning, I think it's equally important to recognize their similarities. Both approaches are constructivist. Constructivism is an epistemology, in other words, a particular belief in how we learn. Constructivism promotes the idea that learners play an active role in their learning and that we aren't passive beings waiting to have our heads filled with information. There are different forms of constructivism, which I'm not going to go into in this video. Suffice to say that both problem-based learning and project-based learning are active learning processes in which learners try to make sense of ideas, problems and information that they encounter. Also in both cases the teacher plays the role of a mentor or a facilitator rather than a lecturer or bestower of knowledge. In the case of project-based learning this is easily achieved since many projects often go beyond the teacher's level of expertise. A third similarity is that they both involve higher order thinking skills including critical thinking. As part of this they both involve the application of knowledge and skills. One can argue that project-based learning has more real-life application, but I'd argue that it's possible to make problem-based learning just as relevant to real life if the teacher has the right educational philosophy. Next, both methods are best conducted in small groups. Problem-based learning is rarely, if ever, done independently. Project-based learning can be done independently, 
Nevertheless, in both cases, the intention is for learners to exchange knowledge and skills with each other, as well as developing communicative, persuasive and negotiation skills. Another similarity is the importance of the process. Again, some argue that the process is only important in project-based learning, but I disagree. I think that the process of solving a problem is just as important in problem-based learning too. Lastly, both approaches have a cyclical revision and end evaluation on the part of the students. Students should always be evaluating how they are progressing, looking for better ways to do what they are doing, perhaps even starting from the beginning or redoing things. And then ultimately they should evaluate their final outcome, whether it be a solution or a project artifact. That's about all for today's video. If you liked the video, please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos about 21st century education.